No. No buzz. A Just Bees book club. Um, today is a morning record, which is rare, and it's a rainy morning record, which is even rarer. Um, gonna talk Julia Tsuka's The Swimmers, which is coming out in February of 2020, tw February of 2022. Um, this is my, I've just started talking for the day voice, I guess. Um, this is, I am completely unfamiliar with Julia Tsuka. Um, she apparently wrote a book called The Buddha in the Attic that was like a huge deal. Um, and another one called the em When the Emperor Was Divine. She has like wildly positive <laughs> um, blurbs from Colson Whitehead specifically, um, among, among a lot of others. But um, yeah, the, the blurb from Colson Whitehead right on the front there, which you certainly cannot read. Uh, there's a new Julia Tsuka novel coming, so we can begin to live again, <laughs> from Colson Whitehead, which is... Damn. Um, this is... this is an interesting one. Um, I have never read anything quite like it, I don't think. Um, in terms of pronouns, um, this book is sort of divided into four sections. Uh, in the first, we have... Uh, sort of first person plural that actually tends more toward I feel like it tends more toward our than we um, just from like sentence construction um, there's a lot of like uh, like flip turns some of us can do them but many of us cannot too scary says one of us just um, like literal sentence construction words that just don't start with the the pronoun. Um, so there's us and our a lot, um, which makes sense because this section is about um, a group of sort of casual swimmers at this underground pool in what initially sort of reads as like a potentially like near future apocalyptic California, but is actually presumably just the recent past. Um, there's constant mention of like the never-ending heat wave, the droughts, stuff like that, um, which is California. Uh, <laughs> um, these this group of swimmers like goes to this pool regularly, um, with different amounts of regularity. Some some come like three days a week, some come every day, that sort of thing. And this beginning section is sort of like the bit, it's sort of like. Um, establishing this what what people share in common in this pool while also having some amount of individuality like there are people there are individuals who will say specific things in the sort of collective voice um but it seems to mostly stick to that or it's, it seems to entirely stick to that collective voice so you get individuals within the collectivity but you don't get anything that individuals would experience outside of that collectivity if that makes any sense um the second section after that um again in terms of or oh, well, let me this is like the whole inciting incident the entire blurb on the back um the thing that happens is these people are going to this pool you sort of get a sense of who they are as a collective and a, a bit bits and pieces here of the individuals um and then one day they are in the pool and somebody notices a crack at the bottom of the pool at the in the deep end of lane four and they a bunch of people lose their shit people said think it's fake there's a bunch of stuff like um theories boil and and experts are called in and etc etc the crack grows the crack disappears and then it grows and um sort of the 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 speculation becomes the big thing the end of this first section um, the pool gets closed. So that's uh, interesting, given it's called the swimmers. Um, and we move from this sort of collective we hour um, to one of the specific swimmers. Um, there's a woman, she's actually the first person mentioned by name in this. Um, one of us, Alice, a retired lab technician now in the early stages of dementia, has comes here because she always has. That's on the first page. Um, so 
first section, a lot of us and our, some some amount of we, a little tiny bit of he and she. Uh, section second section is entirely she and you. Um, I mean, there's there's probably a he in here somewhere. Um, but uh, so yeah, it switches to second, third, second. It switches to second person with a focus on a on a particular individual. Um, and it's that individual is Alice, and it's basically just a very long list of things that she does and does not remember. Um, yeah. Um, actually, yeah. That's, maybe I'm wrong there, actually. No, it's almost entirely in third person. There's a very little second person here. That's the next section. Um, so yeah, first section, a lot of us and our, a little bit of you, a little bit of he and she. Second section is almost entirely she. It's just focused on the things that Alice does and does not remember. Um, sort of cataloging her, the progression of her dementia um, over, over time. Um, third section is a... Strong second person, so a lot of you, and another, and and actually a we. Uh, uh, it is from the perspective of the assisted living home that uh, that Alice ends up in. Um, it is sort of framed as their intake forms, but it's this like really fucked up, <laughs> um, like mixture of like retirement home and like um authoritarian institution kind of um rhetoric uh that very much you know the you the second person helps there a lot um it's it's real fucked. <laughs> um, yeah, like... Um, do, 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 I could read a bit of this. Yeah, here's, here's, a, here's a memorable little piece. Um, unless it is quiet hour, Thursday afternoons from 3 p.m. to 4, the TV must remain on at all times. Even if you are not in your room, the TV must re remain on. Even if you are in your room, but the newscaster is speaking in an incomprehensible light, and an incomprehensible and, you suspect, possibly fictitious foreign tongue, plain English, please, you may find yourself shouting at the screen, the TV must remain on. Even if you are unable, or if, even if you are able to understand what the newscaster is saying, but the news—a school shooting in real time, a nuclear meltdown, an attack of killer bees, stonings and beheadings in a faraway oil-rich kingdom—is so upsetting that you want to put on your best dress and jump out the window, which, as we mentioned earlier, does not, and now you know why, open. The TV must remain on, even if you are asleep, hallucinating, delirious on the phone, or, heaven forbid, catatonic. The TV must remain on. In the last case, of course, with the volume turned down low. Because the TV is not for your entertainment, but for that of our staff. Wherever you are likely to find a staff member, you are more than likely to find a TV. In the dining room, next to the Have You Washed Your Hands sign. In the physical therapy room, above the anti-gravity treadmill. In your bedroom, inches above your bed, on the end of an adjustable arm. And, of course, in the redundantly named TV room. Giant flat screen mounted to the wall above the Purell dispenser. Which, pending approval by corporate, will soon be renamed the Multimedia Room. One computer, one TV, a wicker basket full of last month's magazines. Because every room at Bella Vista is, in a sense, the TV room. Um, that, that kind of vibe, that kind of like, um, yeah, like, uh, vacation brochure authoritarianism vibe is, is a lot of it, um. And then there's a sort of final section, which is like deeply affecting, um, that is a, uh, that is so yeah it goes from this collective uh experience of the swimmers to a sort of almost a catalog in the third person of memories sort of almost exclusively in the in the third person 
um, to this this other collective um, of the of the hospital, I guess, of the assisted living um, facility of Bella Vista. Um, and then the final section is, or the, the collective uh, directed at a second person. Um, and then the final section, uh, it goes back to sort of like the second. It's a lot of catalogs of things that um, she, Alice, does not, does not remember um, with a little bit of you sort of still in there. Um, I'm focusing on the pronouns because it's uh, striking, honestly. It's like really <laughs> weird to read. Um, I This is like the thing I was saying. I've never read anything quite like this. Um, I am, I think I've said this before, but one of the stacks of books that is holding up my light and camera that I'm currently looking into because part of the experience of this is trying to make eye contact with the camera because I'm like terrible at making eye contact in real life. Um, I'm very good at faking it. Um, one of the books is uh, The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin that is, that is holding up this camera, um, which I don't really remember as being primarily a second person book, but that's part of the reason I just need to reread it because I remember because people keep telling me it is. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, second person is not hugely used. Um, first person plural also not a not a huge um, use of that. I know that's um, part of what drew me to um, Namwali Serpel's "The Old Drift" is the sort of like chorus of mosquitoes that is um, like the Greek chorus um, of the book that sort of shows up between sections. I think mostly um, also uses a, a plural, a first person plural. Um, I wrote about this ages ago, I think in Strange Horizons, about um, the game We Know the Devil um, by, ooh, I know AVB wrote it, uh, I can't remember what the, Worst Girl Games, I think, Worst Girl Games is is the studio that they came, I don't think they were called that at the time, um, they also made, ooh, shit, the, the game mech one that I don't. I didn't like quite as much. Um, the, the, I'm very much drawn to a first-person plural. Um, love a we uh, for probably fairly obvious reasons. Um, you know, no power, but <laughs> ain't no power, but the power <laughs> ain't no power, but the power of the people, and the power of the people don't stop. Kind of shit. Um, you know, uh, you have nothing to lose but your chains, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think I'm going to stop mostly at that formal analysis of this book or that formal um, observation. <laughs> sure as fuck wasn't an analysis. Um, yeah, The Swimmers is really good. Um, I found it super deeply affecting, honestly, um, especially by the end. I was I was surprised because the formal experiment sort of gave way to a story of a woman who was like interned during um, Japanese in American internment and um, slowly like lost herself to dementia and the story of her daughter um who was and was not good about it um it gets it seems very very autobiographical also which is rough right because um i i want to i have always wanted to when reading especially like minoritized literature um especially like asian american fiction the impulse to um say like oh this is really a memoir is like a deeply orientalist and racist one um it's like why um maxine hong kingston's woman warrior is called like a memoir of a girlhood among ghosts when it's clearly fiction um that it, that draws from her life but in no way more than a fucking jonathan franzen book or whatever um but it gets marketed as memoir because of the um orientalist gaze of of wanting to consume Asian American fiction, especially as, um, but most kinds of, of, of minoritized fiction, black fiction also has this a lot. Um, the white gaze tends to consume it as an authentic experience, as, as a truth of this um, culture. Uh, and so I, I, I tend to want to <laughs> push that impulse as far away as possible. Um, it, but also, I 
I think it's fairly clear that this is a book about Julia Tsuka and her mom. Um, and her mom, uh, like, suffering dementia and Julia Otsuka's uh, response to it that is definitely filtered through prose and um, form, um, which I think is, again, the most important part of this is why I spent so much time talking about it, but yeah. Um, that bit is affecting, because of her, her formal experiments, of her work um, pushing the reader away and bringing the reader in at the same time, because I, I feel like everyone, like, I feel like I, you constantly see people be like, oh, the use of second person like really draws the reader in because they're directly being addressed. And it's like, that's the opposite experience, I think. is I mean, that might be what theoretically might happen, <laughs> um, but usually uh, is just kind of confusing and off-putting. Um, so I wouldn't say just like you you can't just go okay I'm just gonna use second person and then and then they'll be immersed um, because immersion is not what this is doing is not what the swimmers is doing um, you're not being immersed you're being um, sort of threatened with kindness and um, put outside of a collective group and put in the shoes of someone else who is experiencing th something terrible and you're not getting like i don't know um i'm kind of i'm kind of rambly i guess at this point um yeah i i think i think it's cool um i'm looking forward to seeing if if other people read it i, w I wonder i wonder what colson whitehead ends up thinking maybe i'll read one of his books someday i think he's he seems pretty cool i don't know but those books seem good um hey Thanks for not watching.